You're now listening to Royal Nation Podcast, and I'm the host with the most, Prince Dua, and I got a very, very, very special king. I don't want to say special guest, special king in the building with me, man. Go by the name of Kirk the Barber. He's an entrepreneur, black entrepreneur, that's been doing this thing for a long time, man, and I definitely wanted to get in here and do an interview with this guy, man. I I, I see him all the time, man. He's always dropping jewels, and I and I want him to share some of those jewels and those experiences with, with the community, with the listeners, so they can get educated on that. What's going on, Kirk, man? Hey, what's going on, my bro? Man, the name of your barbershop is... Perfections Barbershop. Perfections. 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 So that's that's like, if you come get a cut from you, you getting, you getting perfection. Man, you gonna come we, out here? You gonna come in looking like Whoopi Goldberg? Come out looking like Halle Berry? What you saying? So, <laughs> we gonna strive to get you there, man. We are gonna strive to do it. Man. Oh man, that's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Look, man, I'm it, it, all respect, man. It's it's good. It's good to have you over here, man. To, to sit down and do this interview with me. I look at you as being a a great leader in the community. I look at what you're doing with all these guys and ladies that work here, man. And and, and, and I know it's hard work to be an entrepreneur. And, and run a business, man. And I and I definitely uh I want the world to see that. I want the world to see what you do and and see what you got going on and, and what you're moving forward to, man. How long you been cutting hair? Uh license, uh about eight years license. You know what I'm saying? Uh uh, you know, started middle school. High yeah, school, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Talk so about you, that a little bit, but so, so you was out here hustling in middle school, cutting hair. Man, I was trying to get it, man. You Chibos. ain't getting no hologram cars, or you when you get you weren't getting paid for it. Nah, man, I, I was uh, mostly family, mostly family. You know, a couple people. Oh, on okay, the block, so you didn't want to fuck nobody head up. You want to you fuck your family indeed, head up, indeed. and then you can make it up at the reunion. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, man, man. somebody phone going off up in here, man. Shut your phone off, man. Shut your phone off. Um, so you've been, so you've been doing this for the perfections business for eight years, and you've been cutting since you were in junior high. All right. Man, what inspired you? Man, um, I I think um, um, when I when I did it, I liked it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I liked it. You know what I mean? I, I enjoyed doing it. Um, I just didn't think of it as a career in high school. Uh, I made a little side money on it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I used to uh, um, in the ninth grade. I used to watch my my partners say it, say it, uh, uh, <laughs> Black and Wesley Square. Man, them boys used to be in there chopping. Yeah. And and uh, 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 Adrian Harper, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to watch them boys cut in school, you know what I mean? And right. then when they left, because they was a little older, I started cutting, you know what I mean? I yeah. started really cutting, you know what I'm saying, the football players and what have you. Uh, uh, so I, I've, I've always enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed, you know, somebody sitting in my chair and, and looking like what you said, Whippy Goldberg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, coming I, in I, like Whippy Goldberg, keep, hell coming all in over looking the like Whippy Goldberg, and oh, I'm color coming purple. out color purple, the color purple. Yeah, that. yeah, that that Whippy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I enjoyed like doing that transformation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they come in looking one way, and then we making them nice. You know what I'm saying? You know, making it just that transformation. So I enjoy that. You know. So. so how how did your family feel about all that? How did you? And I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you was raised by both both parents or not, but that whole idea of saying I want to be a barber and and them not. I mean, I, I don't know what your situation was growing up as a child, but them wanting like you want to be a barber, you want to cut hair. I mean, how did they react to your dream, your passion? Well, uh, like I said, when I was in school, I didn't I didn't think that I really wanted to be a barber, but I liked it. And I just did it to make extra money. You know what I'm saying? But my okay. grandmother, she, uh, uh, it's funny you said that because she used to always tell me, boy, get your ass up out of here. We, you know, you, 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 you ain't paying no light bills around this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when I was real young, I used to have about four or five niggas in the house and we, we in there cutting that. She was like, nah, y'all ain't doing that. Take y'all ass outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So she used to make us go outside in the heat. You know, this this Texas. So <laughs> in, I'm the trying, chair, in the chair. In the chair. wooden old outside. Wooden chair outside all right? It's hot as hell. The country wooden chair for y'all don't know. You did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it was just, you know, it was it was just those haircut experiences that I, I went through early on. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, but, I mean, like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that I was, I always wanted to be a football player. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I always wanted to be a football player. And, uh. And uh, uh, cutting hair was just something I did to make some money. To be honest with you. So what you want? To, what position were you playing as a football? Oh man, boy, I was cold, man. He was Jesse Jones, class ninety nine, man. Ninety nine in the building. I, I was cold with it, man. Uh, he didn't let y'all know his real age, by the way. Yeah, it, <laughs> hey, ain't no shame in my game, man. Ain't no shame, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, I played everything, bro. Everything. Right. I was, I was pretty athletic, bro. I was pretty athletic. You know, I, I wasn't the best, but I was. So football athletic. was your passion. That was a passion. And cutting hair was your hobby. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty so, much. The, 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 to bring that out out front, that's what yeah, that was, right? Sure. So that means you a big football fanatic, right? Yeah, I like. I love. So I love how you football. feel about that 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 Patriots and uh, Atlanta game? Man, now, be, be careful how you choose to answer this, because I'm a Patriots fan now. Man. What up, Tom Brady? I I, I wanted I wanted Atlanta to win. I did. I wanted Atlanta was to win. Was that a racist decision? <laughs> man, you know, <laughs> you know what oh, I mean. Like, man. I, I mean, Atlanta is is a black city, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I you know, I got uh, a lot of problems. Always mad because the Texans didn't go. I mean, hey, keep it real. I mean, one thousand. I, I already knew the Texans weren't going. I'm, I'm a realistic person. You know All what right. I'm saying? I already knew my 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 boys wasn't wasn't going. So. When it was Atlanta and, and, and uh, 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 Patriots, you know, my my goal was with Atlanta. You know okay. What I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I want that city to 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 you know manifest from that. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Okay. You know what I mean, it is what it is. I got a real good question for you, man. Like honestly, and and I want the the listeners to know, you know, you're talking to Kirk the Barber. He's an entrepreneur. He's been an entrepreneur for for several years. He owns his own barbershop, Perfections. Out in Houston, Texas, but um, what inspired you to be an entrepreneur? Because not everybody wakes up and say, "I mean, you have thousands of barbers and and beauticians and you know beauty salons. You got people that want to do hair, braids, cut, toupees, all that." Right. <laughs> I mean, but what inspired you to want to be an entrepreneur and own your own building and 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 get barbers to come in and there and of course the barbers are bosses themselves and they would rent out that section. But what inspired you to do that? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. When I look back now, I've always had drive. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was in the streets, like I always had hustle. All right, that's you know when you was uh, AKA Boo? Yeah, All right. right. We're gonna boo, get to that man. later. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Not 50 so, Cent Boo, but H-Town Boo. Yeah, man, yeah. Uh, But, you know, I, I always had a drive about myself. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, so I think that, you know, even at a young age, like when I was, you know, doing my little thing, I still had a job too. So I had a job and I was doing my thing, you know? Yeah. Um, I kept the job to keep my grandma happy. You know what I'm saying? Then I was in the streets to try to, you know, blend in with So you was pretty much raised by your grandmother pretty much. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh but through through every job I didn't had, every, you know, job experience, I was always grinding it. You know, I didn't. I, you know, I used to go to jobs and people be like, "Yeah, hey, you, you know, you, I man, you doing too much. You know, you tripping." I used to be like, "Man, fuck you." You know what I'm saying? Like this, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna make sure it's straight. I'm, you know, I ain't oh, so trying to you, kiss oh, so nobody. Clean, oh, so you was cleaning up too? You was, the, you was shuffling the hair oh, around. Man, I say I, I did all that. So man. you really started from the bottom to the top. Man, to the bottom to the, what they say from the Rudy to the Poodle. to the Rudy to the Tudor. That man, was the '90s shit. Say, but okay, man, we yeah. know how old you are now. Yeah, you know? man, I'm, I'm up there, baby. <laughs> I ain't, ain't no spring chicken, man. You man. still young, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know. So. Keep on going so that you did all these necessary things because you wanted to learn, like they said, you want to know what the custodian does all the way up to the CEO, correct? Most definitely. Most definitely, man. I mean, I got CDL license right now. You know what I'm saying? Track the trailer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still keep it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've been hustling all my life. So what yeah. were the steps you took to, to get to owning your your own? I, I From my understanding, I know you were working – out of a mall one time you was cutting right. hair out of a mall. Right, right. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh uh, uh 
so I, uh, from when I was working, well, when I first started cutting hair legally with my license, yeah, I had a job. I was working at Quest Diagnostics, and I was cutting hair. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was doing both. So boy, I'd be like, damn, they come in at six o'clock in the morning. See, I had to be to work at five. I did that for five years. I had to be to work at five in the morning. Wow. I got off at two. I had tried to get it to the shop to three, and then I worked that to the close. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And did so, you have kids at the time? Or? I had kids, man. Okay. I, I remember days where I would leave and they would be asleep, and I come home they sleep. Wow. That was the grind. That was the hustle. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, when I was in school, I was saving to to have my own shop. You know, I used I tell everybody about my little jug, my five gallon jug. Yeah. You know the little water thing. I I tell everybody about it. You know what I'm saying? You know I tape that bad boy up. You know what I'm saying? So Every you were day. literally taping up a five gallon jug and stuffing money inside of it. Man. And the reason why you taped it up was what? Why? Because I didn't want to see it. I just wanted to And you see not it seeing it yeah. made it to the fact where you wouldn't go in and spend it. Most definitely. So you were, it was kind of like out of mind, out of sight. You wouldn't convince yourself to spend it because you can visually see it. Most definitely. Most wow. definitely. Yeah, man. I'm talking about pennies, dimes, nickels. That takes some strong discipline, like to discipline yourself to do that. And son, I want you to hear this because what, what your father did is something <laughs> that got you in a good situation. Yeah. But, but keep yeah. going with your story. But uh, but yeah, man. So you know, uh, I was saving and um, I was working the uh, Quest Diagnostics. Then I was cutting hair, um, and I was we was in the mall, the shop, Carmen. Yeah. Was, uh, I was working for uh, uh, Carmen, a good lady. I want to give a shout out to her. Wonderful what up, Carmen, lady. baby? You sound like you were sexy as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, the art of hair, man. That was that was one of the ladies oh. that I worked for. Oh, you that know. was one of her hustles, ordering hair. Uh, art of hair. Oh, art of hair. Art okay. of hair. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, I was working in I was working in in her shop, um, and it, it, it closed down. And uh, I, you know, I went and talked to her like a real OG. I ain't okay. go behind her back. I ain't go do. I went and talked to her, and I told her, I say, you know, look, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna open up that shop in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I want to open up. The what shop. was her? What was her expression on her face when you, out of all these people, came in there and you want to come open up the shop? I mean, you want to open up a shop and you and you and you stepped to her, right? Now like remember, you working for her at the time, right? I mean, you paying booth rent or whatever right. the case right. may be. I'm working for. Her. Okay, you working for? Her. Mm -hmm. What happened? Oh, uh, I mean, she took it. She took it good, man. I mean, you know, she she um. You know, she was telling me all of, you know, the stuff about it. Uh uh but, you know, she didn't say don't go do it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. like she was trying to, you know, uh tell me not to do it. Uh uh but uh I just wanted her to know that I wasn't trying to go behind her back. That was it. Nice. So rather what she said they respected you for that. Yeah, whether she said yay or nay, I'm still heading, you know, to there to go talk to the dude. So anyway, I talked to the dude. You know, put my little, put my little, uh, 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 I went to the house and, and put my jug down on the ground. And I pulled out my knife and I bust that bad boy open, man. So, <laughs> now, I, now, I'm curious to find out how much money did you have saved in that? Let the world know because I, I got to hear this. Man, I had 13000 in them. 13000 pesos? 13000 <laughs> 13 American dollars 13,000 Yeah I'm talking about With all the coins All the change I had dollars Cause he had and So when I first Started doing it And this this is how I know What progress is Okay When I first started doing it I was putting dimes I was just putting My change in there Yeah your loose change In your pocket you know what That saying? most people Take for granted Right Of course You know I go I go to the store I come home I got 85 cents Worth of change In my pocket Like I I got some shit in here right now. You know what I'm saying? Right now. Let me have that, man. I need <laughs> you know that, man. I, I got. I need. I need to sponsor yeah. this podcast, man. Right, so I give will. Me some of We're gonna work it out. We keep getting them jugs, <laughs> baby. We need them jugs, man. Yeah. Forget what y'all talking about. Forget that. You, you know, the, the, the plastic. You need the jugs. You mm -hmm. like. So I started off with the change. You know. Then I moved up to dollars, and then five dollars. But you know, see, I'm, I'm cutting out too, so I'm getting cash every day. 
You know what I'm saying? Then I went from 10, then to the 20s, and then the 50s, and the 100s. And then we got to a point where I was putting hundreds up in there. You know wow. what I'm saying? You know, I'm putting hundred dollar bills in my. So in at my that bag. point, you must have been you instead of you going to strip club. You was putting, man, you was making it rain in a jug. Man, I please, bro. I, I man, come on, man. We I going, you, it's going in the bucket. I know you was giving Melissa for some of that money, man. Man, you know, I did a little something, but it ain't too much. <laughs> the man. Melissa for you know, not the real Melissa for you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man. <laughs> but you know, that's that's what it was, man. I, I saved, man, and and when the opportunity came, I was ready because if that opportunity came and I ain't had nothing. Yeah, I would have had to pass it up, so wow. I had to get right. You know what I'm saying? Discipline, like you say, is discipline, man. Yeah, it is big time for you yeah. to even for you to even fathom that in your mind and, and consider that. You know, for you to even do that, that's a big. You know, you have to have some type of military mindset to be able to do that. Because you know how I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. When I was trying to save money in a damn jar, I didn't think about taping it up. And yeah. trying to, you know, but that 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 takes having that, just being firm and believing in what you want to do. Because if you didn't do that, brother, you wouldn't be, you would never been able to do that with that opportunity presenting itself to you. That's right. And you That's took right. it. That's right, man. You took it like a real G, That's like right. you were supposed to. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, when you when you decided to uh, move in, you know, you did that. She gave you the opportunity. You seized the moment when you moved. How did you come up with picking the people you wanted to work with? Man, I had I had maybe about about four or five people that that said that they was gonna come from the from the old shop. Well, no, these was just just people you know that was barbers you know that I had I had network with. Yeah. Um. Um. And they was like, "Yeah, man, we coming, we coming, we coming." Woo, woo, woo. When I opened up, not one came. Not one. Y'all hear that? You did. And they so, were all friends. They all, all friends. You know, I mean, we, you know, we, we was cool. You know, we, we did our thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they told me they was coming. So I was, you know, I'm I'm like, okay, so that got that right there. I got that right there. I got, and I opened up. I had one barber. When you opened up, you had one barber. One barber. Grand opening. One barber. Wow. Yeah. So. After that, man, I um, uh, I just, uh, I mean, I I can't even explain to you how, you know, things grew. I mean, I I know on on the end of me, you know, trying to be as professional as I can be, yeah, it grew. But just getting the people in and and and, and just really doing it, like, it, it was just the Most High. You know what I mean? Like, I got to give all praise to the Most High, man, because, you know, um, um, uh, it wasn't just me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just me. You know? Yeah, well, it couldn't have been. I mean, things like that. I mean, some things fall out the sky, I would like to believe. But it's all about you being ready for it when it fall out the sky. Yeah. I mean, you was being prepped yeah. in preparation. Yeah. It still and, is. And, I mean, and that's you know, growth is always a learning experience. You, you're always going to grow. You could be 80 years old. Come you're on. You're always going to grow. All right? Got to. But I, my next question for you, and I, and I think, what would you tell people that want, like, you know, I base this podcast, Royal Nation podcast, off of educating, motivating, and influencing people from whatever nationality. But you have someone out here listening to this interview right now, and they want to know, all right, well, I wonder what it takes to be an entrepreneur, what it takes to be a businessman. What kind of advice would you give to them? Hard work, dedication, and understanding what professional or being professional is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it don't matter. I always tell my partners from from the street, man, look, man, you sell the dope, sell that shit right. Mm. You did, you know what I'm saying? You be professional. A professional be professional dope at sell. selling dope. Hey. <laughs> be you mean is be be great at what you do. What be you great say. at what you do. You know what I'm saying? Be be great at what you do. You know, like I I, I commend every man, woman that done made it to the top or, or or made it to a certain level in their business to where that they they comfortable financially. They worked hard for that. Yeah, I commend them. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's hard work, whether they real or fake. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? It's hard work. You know what I'm saying? You got to be willing to put in work. 
when ain't nobody putting in putting work. in work. You know so you would say consistency is the biggest part. Consistency in a good way, cause see, a, a motherfucker can be consistent in some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Niggas can be consistent. Give me an example. Share with the of being, what's, what's, you know, what's being consistency in bullshit? Oh, I mean, in, in my profession, I'm saying like, you know, as a as a barbershop owner, you know, you want to keep your shop as clean as possible. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So if you consistent in keeping it clean, then you consistent in in that positive nature. Now you could be a motherfucker that's consistent in not cleaning this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So if you consistent in not cleaning it, then it's gonna be consistently messy, stinking, and you know just all kind of shit going on. So yeah. just whatever, whatever. If it's if it's positive and it's professional, if you consistent in that, then yeah, go get it. Come back with it, man. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna happen. You know okay. Man? Yeah. So I got another question for you, man. Like you don't look at you don't look at race. You don't look at Nationality, you'll look at gender, right? Mm-mm, nah. Now, I don't know your political views, but if Donald Trump were to walk in here and want to get a cut, how would you treat this gentleman? Man, I'm going to treat him shit. A1. A1. You going to have sir. Sean cut his hair? Man, we're going <laughs> to we gonna, we gonna do it. Uh, we're going to do business, man. You're going to you know do business. You're going to get him right. You're going you gonna to keep the toupee on lock. Man, we're going to have that fleet. song gun. We might keep even put nice. a little dye in it, but put some Beijing the in Beijing it. Beijing in there. And it, <laughs> Get it. For everybody don't know what that Beijing is. That Beijing the truth. Yeah. <laughs> that boy come out with a fresh line, with a yes. taper and everything. Yeah, yes. we're going to do them right, though. Yeah, we're going to yes. take care of business because it's business, man. Ain't no ain't no color in there. We're going yes. you know, to we gonna take care of you. We're going to take care of you. So, you know, it's funny because um, I didn't know anything about the, the uh, barbershop beauty salon industry. But I understand is everybody – is entrepreneurs in that business. Most definitely. And the reason why I say that is because everybody, you know, you you have your clientele, you're your own boss, but there's always a bigger boss, but you rent this section out to people and they pay you monthly, right? Yeah, just like I pay rent. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody's paying somebody, yeah, regardless. Yeah, yeah. You can be up. a boss, but you're paying somebody. Yeah, Whether it's paying Uncle Sam. Somebody. I think Uncle he, Sam might he be probably the paying boss, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, My yeah. question to you, how difficult and what are some of the obstacles that you have to deal with when you're dealing with miniature bosses, being that you're a boss? You know, man, and first, I want your honest opinion on Yeah, that. I'm going to be honest, man. First, I want to say that, you know what I'm saying, like, man, we got a good group. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got a good group of guys. You know what I mean? The barbers, like, you know, a lot of barbers that I have worked with, you know, um, uh, I couldn't have done it without them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, Evidently. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people don't understand, like, the barbers need me just like I need them. You know what I'm sure. saying? When you have that, that mindset of that, then everything will be cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got, I've been having 13 chairs for some years now. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got one, maybe one child available right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've, I have a consistency of being pretty full. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a great now, thing. Right. Uh, so one of the biggest trials that I would say would be because a lot of people don't understand why I do what I do. And why do you do what you do? I do what I do because I want people to understand that we can be professional. We can be organized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can be... Um, uh, just because this is a black owned business Don't mean that we have to be Around here shoot them up bang bang True You know what I'm saying Like we want all the money We ain't prejudiced True We get white boys come through I, here I see that We get Asians We get Mexicans Ladies Arabs Ladies Like they all come They know they want to get a fresh fade The edge up With that nice cut They come into perfections now, you look around and you might say, well, damn, look at all the stations look the same. Them boys look like they color-coded in their uniform. You know what I'm saying? So, And I want you to break down that because I understand you have a color coordination thing going on. I see one of the gentlemen over here, they have on like 
green is gray khaki and and black shirt. Is that something that hell you even had yeah, it on? That's, I but, got it on too, man. I got it on too. Is, yeah. What's the purpose of that? And I mean, for people to be uniformed. It's it's just the uniformity, man. Like you know, my thing is, I want to go franchise, man. You know, I, I want to go franchise, man. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not looking to just have a barbershop and say, oh, I just got a barbershop. Yeah. I want a business, man. I did this to do business. You know what I mean? So if you go in any other business, if you go, now I know this might be a different type of business, but if you go to Walmart, guess what? They all uniform. True. You know I what mean, I'm saying? Every yeah. major corporation that's succeeding is uniform. Is uniform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the. That's one of the stepping stones to that professional uh, 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 image. You know what I mean? You know, and I understand that. You know, I understand that. You know, uh, so even though this is an entrepreneur job, like I think I've had some problems with some people because they they're like, nah, damn, nigga, why we gotta do this? Why we gotta do this? Why? We? But when we looking at the walk-ins coming in, they like, damn, okay. All right, I'll do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think as far as that probably would be one of the most things that I have conflict with the barbers is like just kind of like, you know, because everybody don't see that vision. You okay. know what I'm saying? Everybody don't see it. But, you know, like I like if you look at my look at the stations right now, all of them are the same. Yeah. And all you, of them are the same right and you, now. And you understand why it's like that, right? I mean, I I, I – and corporations, they have, they want to be respected in a big situation where, to if you're working for GE, you want, you you want them to take you seriously. It's certain things that I can't really do, you know what I mean? Because it is an independent, you know, contracted booth rental situation. Yeah. So there is certain things that I can't do. Like what? Uh, I mean, if it was up to me, man, I had. <laughs> I mean, it'd be like really uniform. Like really, like you know, uh, uh, what you mean, like badges and stuff? Man? I mean, I can't, I, I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna give all the game away. Uh, well, that's, that's but, what it's here for. But give us a yeah. little sneak peek. I mean, as far as as far as me, you know, being like this is a booth rental, uh, uh, barbershop. Okay. Uh, uh, if I could really do it, 